Give it up for Eric. <laughs> on Anya. <laughs> All right. So, I know you know Phoenix, but do you know I know? No. <laughs> so, I'm Eric Ostrich. I work at Smart Rent. I do a lot of the Nerves Hub stuff. Uh, part of the 2.0s that Frank talked about. All right, so this is I know. Uh, we're just going to go through the README a little bit. Uh, really, only this. <laughs> uh, it's a framework built, built on top of Ellie um, instead of Cowboy or Bandit or anything else. So <coughs> we're going to go through a little bit of vocab real quick. So I know has a handler. You can think of this as your endpoint. It takes a request and reduces over a series of middleware to generate a response. Middleware, you can think of as kind of like a plug, takes a token, returns a token. A token is kind of like a con, but it's just a map. And when it comes out to I know, it needs these three keys of a response status, a response header, and body. And that's it. So there's a few other pieces of this. Uh, it's got views, nothing special here. It's got routes, nothing special. So what does make Ino special? Uh, it's faster than Phoenix, um, about one and a half times faster, which is pretty cool. Um, both of these are, <laughs> this is kind of a, a Phoenix uh, new with uh, built-in prod um, mixenv with just a simple route that just returns like hello world. Uh, and then the same thing for I know. I know is the only thing different is you'll see a line that says like I know development recompile. That's the only thing that's taken out. Um, so it's already pretty fast. Um, I think this was on a 12 core VM with like 32 gigs of RAM. So it's nothing too special. Uh, it's also simpler than Phoenix. Um, we're going to see a lot of it. And I think I know is a total of like a thousand lines maybe. So there's not much to it. Um, the other thing I'll say is your app's probably fine with dead views. Uh, a lot of what I do is just static pages. Like, it's probably fine. Um, so let's go through some of the basics. Uh, if anyone wants to play along at home, you can install this I know new and generate a new app. So this is what a handler looks like. It's got your list of middleware. Um, comes, I know comes with a bunch of it. So we've got the common ones, which is like pulling out a path, uh, headers, uh, request param, or like post body, that kind of stuff. Um, it'll do some assets for you. So I think it just looks in the priv assets folder. And if there's a file, it sends it back. Um, then we have our recompile. <coughs> uh, we set our session config. We decode our session. We load our flash from the session. Um, and then the kind of weird thing here is uh, the, the routes are all broken up. So you set the routes here. We'll see what those look like in a second. We're going to match our route. Then we're going to, the params is in between that match route and handle route so that I can yank out params from the route. We'll handle it. Um, and then you can see here is a layout. So just because your action is like the thing, it can, it's still just middleware. It'll return a token. Layout wrap just takes the inner content, shoves it in another view, and moves along. Uh, and then we're going to encode our session, and we're going to do some logging. Um, and those two look a little special because at any point in time in the chain, you can return, you can just put halt true in the token, and then I know we'll stop um, unless it gets to this uh, ignore halt true. Um, and then the the kind of the the real work happens in that I know token reduce. So it just reduces over with that halt true kind of check, and that's about it. Um, this is what the routes look like. Um, so they're just functions. They just make structs. So we have git. Uh, and then so it's the route, a list of middleware that you want to run, and then some options. So it could just be the list could just be a single middleware there. Uh, and then the as root, as preview, as links, as link generates some URL helpers. That we can that will compile into another module on the next slide, but kind of the important thing is you can kind of break up your routes here. Um, so, oops, I've spelled it wrong. Middle where um, 
So that, uh, in one of the projects I have, that's, that's a thing that you'll, you'll make. So it's just a, f a function that loops over the routes and appends whatever is in that admin, which might be like some middleware that says like, you're signed in, you are an admin, like that kind of stuff. So you can kind of do plug like, or pipeline like stuff, but it's just lists of middleware. Uh, and to generate helpers, there's nothing too special. You require the routes and you just compile it into the module. So you can compile it in a different one, you can put it in your handler, you can put it wherever you want. Um, so this is what a route middleware looks like. Probably looks very similar to things you've seen in Phoenix. Um, th really the only difference is that you'll see like a session flash put token response redirect. So there's a few of these, like I know comes with a few common things so that like a redirect to a route, it'll put uh, 302, a post, like a, a body of like redirecting, dot, 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 uh, and then the location header for you. Uh, otherwise, you kind of have to, that's what this a normal page will look like. So this is just going to render a 200, text HTML, and then the views come with a, uh, when you compile it, it will generate a function that takes a token, the URL, or like the file that's going to do it, and then the assigns. Uh, so then that will give you a nice function that will automatically set the response body for you. And here's what the views look like. So there's no use or anything. You just compile a list of files. So you can do whatever directory structure that you want. I don't care. Uh, point to it here. <laughs> um, so you may be asking, what about WebSockets? Uh, they're gone. <laughs> uh, uh, it turns out that at least the way that I've built web apps, SSE works a lot better because um, I mostly just want a, like my web page is talking to a server, and I don't need the like kind of chat interface for for most of the things I've dealt with. Um, but some people may be asking, what's SSE? Uh, and that's a server sent event. It looks like this. Uh, that's kind of all it is. Um, so it's just a standard response. It's a text event stream, and you. I think you need to chunk encode it. Um, so that it's just a very, it's a long-lived connection. Um, and so anytime the server has a new event, it's going to put event, the type, data, whatever you want in that line. You can put an ID, I think. Uh, and then it's two new lines to say that there's, that, that is done. Um, and so you can just kind of have a long-lived connection. It's an event source in JavaScript. Uh, it looks very similar to a WebSocket source or whatever it's called. Um, and yeah, you can kind of treat it the same other than the sending back through it. This is a one-way direction. Um, so we're going to look at Tapio real quick. So this is a Twitter clone that uses uh, SSE. So the, this is kind of the only thing that's different in iNo, I guess. Like normally, uh, you build up the response that you want and then kind of forget about it and iNo will send it back. There's no way of sending directly. Like in Phoenix, I think there's a few things that can, like once you call it, it sends it right then and there, and, or plug might do that. But um, this is, all, everything else about I know is like, you take a token, you do whatever you want to it, but it doesn't actually send anything until it gets back to I know. So here, there's two special keys, so you'll say trunk, chunk true and give it a handler. And then that handler is a gen server-like thing it's an init. Here we're using Phoenix pub sub because like no reason to reinvent that. Um, and then every sec 30 seconds it'll do a ping just to kind of keep it alive. And then every time it gets a ping, it's just going to encode a uh, timestamp. And then we just hand build the event ping data new new. And then it's a okay, the response and then the token so that it just kind of keeps um, reducing over itself. Uh, we have our handle, so this is a Tapio event. Uh, you can see if you do a like, a post, uh, you can just reload the whole page if you want um, at that point. So you can take a look at what this is. So here we have Tapio. We're going to type in one. These are two separately signed in pages. So this is all service and events. Uh, it's pretty snappy. 
Uh, I bet if I didn't tell you it, you wouldn't have guessed. You might have thought WebSockets, because if you look as I click on like on the other side, it's pretty instant. Um, and so this is server send events for the events coming down, and then it's just plain AJAX for everything else. Um, so it's like you have your API already, just call it, I guess. <laughs> uh, and then this is what uh, the server send events looks like in the network inspector. So I'm just going to kind of go off to the side and click things. And you'll notice this looks really familiar to the, the web sockets. There's just no like direction because it's only one way. Um, so you might be thinking, uh, is this a lot of JavaScript? I don't like writing JavaScript. Uh, but it kind of is. Like you can get away with doing not a lot of JavaScript if you don't want to, but if you're doing web development, you kind of can't escape JavaScript, so sorry. Um, and then the other thing is like, SSC is cool, but static pages are also cool. Like n your page that's just displaying like customer data probably doesn't need to be like sitting there always up to date because someone clicked something, I don't know. It's probably static data. <laughs> um, and then this is a uh, URL shortener, there is zero JavaScript here, so it's just to show like, come in, paste the gig city link, click shorten, like, that's pretty fast, so that's all static, so. Yeah, so, I have one final thing, should I use Ino? And I can't help you with that, 